<laughs> this is brilliant, but I like this. Restoration Mod, or Res Mod, is a complete gameplay overhaul mod for Payday 2 that makes the game good again. And I say good again because, well... This mod has a lot more than just being a rebalance mod, and almost everything about the game has changed, as well as a lot of new additions. So it's gonna take a while to go over all the changes and why they make the game more fun. A key design principle behind many of the changes in ResMod is more stuff works, and that can be seen in the inventory and skills. Overall, skills are less impactful. What? No, no, alright. I know that sounds bad. That might sound bad, but it is balanced in a way where skills are not required for your builds to function. A lot of skills have either been made base kit, and the required skills are either toned down, rebalanced, or removed. One example is Inspire, and it now requires line of sight. This may sound like a horrible nerf, but even if the skill was left unchanged because of how everything works in the mod, honestly, Inspire still wouldn't even be good if you could use it through walls like you can in vanilla. And that just is how the game works, is how it's rebalanced. Another key examples of skills not being needed are weapon skills. The required number go up skills like overkill and trigger happy are now no longer required if you're going to use their respective weapon type. They still provide damage increases, but the damage numbers are rebalanced to not need you to have these damage increasing skills. Additionally, a lot of these rebalanced skills offer more quality of life, like Spray and Prey, which is just body expertise, has a new ace effect where instead of just more armor penetration, you get increased damage the longer you're spraying. Damage increased skills like Crits and Berserker still exist, but you no longer have to pick them up if you want to kill enemies on higher difficulties because the enemies are way less bullet spongy. This lets you invest into other things like better survivability or utility, so you can still full send all your skill points into killing better, but then you lose out on said survivability or utility. Something that helps you specialize into a specific field even more is the fact that some secondaries have become primaries and some primaries have become secondaries. This means if you fully invest into pistols, you can bring a secondary pistol and a primary pistol without having to use a Kimbo. You can use a primary assault rifle and a secondary assault rifle to have your full loadout benefit from using assault rifles. Also, there are a good amount of new weapons, with one of my favorites being a 500 Magnum primary pistol that can penetrate shields. ResMod also has nice quality of life features where it tells you what skills your gun uses. On top of this, many of the weapon gimmicks are also displayed and color coded, such as having high armor penetration, movement speed alterations, and shotgun pellet counts. Oh yeah, shotguns function like normal video game shotguns in ResMod, where you shoot a certain amount of pellets that each do a bit of damage, instead of Payday 2's weird full damage per pellet jank. More weapons also have gimmicks, like the double barrels having alternate fire modes where you shoot both barrels, and a lot of the old western weapons having a fan the hammer or slam fire mode. While we're still in the inventory screen, let's look at melee weapons and the changes to melee weapons. Melee has become viable in ResMod without needing skills with just a few changes. First of all, the enemy health rebalancing, but mostly it's because 1. you can sprint while charging melee, and 2. you can now headshot with melee. On top of that, Counter-Strike Basic is now base kit, and the Cloaker Countering effect is now only a basic tier 2 skill instead of an ace tier 3 skill, making it actually a worthwhile investment. Many melee weapons also have new gimmicks, such as having different swing radiuses, bleed damage, actually being a nail gun, actually being a chainsaw, or being able to backstab. Throwables also have more information displayed, and it lets you actually know what they do, as well as telling you how many you get. And again, that color coding is so nice. It really helps your mind quickly understand what text is important, and associating different colors with different things really just helps it flow better. While we are still in the inventory, let's go over the changes to deployables. Now remember, everything about the game is completely rebalanced. Starting off first with the ammo bag, it is basically unchanged. Bulletstorm still exists and is very strong. Next is the throwables case, which replaces the useless armor bag. The throwable case is an example of something that was in ResMod that was later added to Payday 2, and some of these changes also were added into Payday 3, which we'll get to later. The throwable case was in ResMod way before they added the ordnance bag. 
The way it works is the same as the dead drop, but instead of one charging restoring one of your throwables, one charge restores all of your throwables. Next is the body bag case, which has some nice quality of life improvements. Now, one charge of the body bag restores all your body bags, as well as restoring all of your cable ties. Now the doctor bag, this is where we get into what makes this mod really different from vanilla. The doctor bag no longer restores your downs and no longer fully heals you. What the doctor bag does now is it gives you a healing over time buff that heals 4% of your health every 5 seconds and this buff lasts for 3 minutes. Doctor bags are no longer the deployable of all time because in vanilla it's stupid how just one person bringing upgraded doctor bags lets you go down 24 times. 36 times with only a 4 point skill investment to get 9 lives aced. Resmod actually punishes you for going down by not letting you get downs back for free. The way you get downs back now is by surviving assaults. This removes the meta of everyone just bringing doctor bags and inspire to cheese every heist by just removing the penalty for going down. You actually have to try. ECM jammers have a nice quality of life change where you get double the amount of ECMs, but they each have half the duration. This makes it more worthwhile to use ECMs to open doors in both loud and stealth, and you have more different places to deploy your ECMs for using feedback and loud. As I said earlier, more stuff works. You don't need to bring doctor bags to every heist, so more niche builds like feedback and sentries are more viable. Speaking of sentries, let's just go over them now. Sentries no longer permanently break when they die. Instead, now they just need to be rebooted with a short interaction followed by a long reboot sequence where they don't do anything, but they'll eventually get repaired and function again. Additionally, sentries intimidate civilians in a decently large radius, and this is good because killing civilians actually has a penalty in stealth now, so it is good to bring a sentry on certain heists to pacify large groups of civilians if you're doing stealth. First aid kits have been nerfed slightly, but are still really, really good. Now, instead of being a full heal, they just heal 150 health, which is most of your health. And as well, when you fully upgrade first aid kits, you only get 9 instead of 14. You still have uppers for down prevention, but the vanilla first aid kit would be just like way too strong in res mod with all the changes to the gameplay. Fully upgraded first aid kits are still really good and are probably the best deployable in my opinion. So don't feel bad that they were nerfed. Next up is the Ordnance Bag, and because Resmod already had the throwable case and the vanilla Ordnance Bag is just the Resmod throwable case, Resmod reworked the Ordnance Bag to be a mix between an ammo bag and the throwable case. The Ordnance Bag has 4 charges and each charge restores 25% ammo to both of your guns and restores 1 throwable. Lastly is Trip Mines slash Shaped Charges, which although you can carry less mines at only 10 when fully upgraded, I think that overall they are better because you get 8 Shaped Charges instead of just 6, and they are less of a skill point investment and are automatically better because Dr. Bags are not required. Still in inventory, but something a bit more related to the actual game is the changes to Armor and Dodge. Now first going over Concealment, Concealment has been renamed to Mobility. And the way it works for weapons now, it actually does have an effect on your weapon, is the bigger your weapon, the less the mobility, so they handle slower, you swap to them slower, you ADS slower. This does not affect your detection rate. Like in Payday 3, your gear does not affect how fast you get spotted, making it more viable to attempt partial stealth with big loud gear. Something that affects both armor and dodge playstyles is the fact that suppression is removed, thank god. Suppression is the mechanic in Vanilla Payday 2 where if an enemy is attacking you, even if you're behind cover, your armor regen is paused. This is stupid and it has been removed. Armor builds have a new mechanic that helps them called Deflection. Deflection is damage resistance that is applied to your health and the bigger your armor, the more deflection you have. Some other skills will help you increase your deflection as well. This helps you not die instantly when your armor breaks. Dodge has been completely reworked to no longer be RNG. Without skills, taking damage it will increase your dodge meter, and when your dodge meter is high enough, you are guaranteed to dodge the next bullet. And when you dodge, you have a longer grace period before you can take damage again, and depending on how light your armor is, the longer this period will be. High dodge values increase the amount of dodge you get from being hit, and certain skills and perks can give you dodge in other ways, like getting dodge from sprinting, crouching, or landing headshot kills. Perk decks have been changed to be a lot more balanced. Overall, most of them are still the same core idea, like Crew Chief is still passive team buffs, Stoic is still no armor and use the flask to avoid damage. But all of them have been rebalanced to be more in line with each other, 
and additionally, most of the ship perk decks have been buffed to rework to be actually fun. For example, Gambler now gives you dodge and armor for picking up ammo, making it a lot stronger and actually worth going out into the open to grab ammo. Yakuza and Hitman have had the biggest glow ups going from actually useless to being really strong and really fun. Yakuza now actually fits the glass cannon playstyle and is actually good and loud, giving you more dodge less health you have, and a sort of extra life where the first time you would go down per down, instead you stay up at one health which lets you get the most benefit out of Berserker. Meanwhile, Hitman has went from the literally most useless perk deck ever to insanely fun. What Hitman does now is actually incentivize gun kata gameplay, mixing in melee into your combat better than Infiltrator and Sociopath. Every kill you get with not melee stores up some health, up to 3 kills. You get this health as temporary hit points when you get a melee kill. Basically, if every 4th kill you get is a melee kill, but it doesn't have to be 4th, you'll just get the most benefit if it's your 4th kill, you constantly have a buffer of health to work with that protects your real health. As long as you can keep killing, you can stay in the fight. I made an entire video basically about this, how having skill-based health buffers makes for fun in gameplay, so yeah, I find Hitman and Resmod really fun. All of the perk decks in Resmod are more fun because the tier list isn't as spread out. You can pick whatever you want and not be throwing by not picking Leech, Stoic, or Hacker. Those are still here and are still good, but don't dominate the game as, well, more stuff works. Before talking about loud, let's quickly cover stealth. Basically, it's actually good now and it's more forgiving and doesn't have as many instant fail states. Instead of one fuck up fails the run, now doing bad things increases the suspicion meter at the top. Bad things include killing guards, civilians, answering too many pagers, dropping pagers, or being spotted on camera. Killing guards with a melee before they spot you doesn't make them drop a pager, but still killing a guard will increase your suspicion. Additionally, on higher difficulties, you have less pagers. Dominating guards doesn't make them drop a pager, and because you didn't kill them, it doesn't increase suspicion. However, you can't move them, and if you kill them after, they will drop a pager, which you will have less of on high difficulties. This does let you completely take over some maps in stealth, but you need to do it in a way where you're aware of all the guards. It requires a lot of map knowledge to actually pull it off. Because killing civilians also increases suspicion, you cannot kill every civilian for free. This is why the body bag cases and sentries are more useful in stealth, so you can non-lethally pacify a bunch of civilians. The higher the suspicion meter is, the faster you get spotted, and once it gets full, you have one minute before the alarm goes off. Because of this, it actually means that pseudo-stealth is actually kind of viable, as you can get through a decent chunk of the heist before it goes loud. And again, more stuff works. Moving over to Loud, this is where the real game is, and as I've already gone over the changes to you, the player, with the removal of the medic bag meta and the armor and dodge and skill changes, the only real thing left to talk about for Loud are the enemies, and the enemies right here, this is what I love about Resmod so much. The enemies are way more fun to fight in Resmod, as well as just look at. There is way more variety in the enemy design, and they look a lot cooler. The shotgun, SMG, and rifle, light SWAT all actually look different from each other instead of all having the exact same model. And the different tiers from going from the normal city SWAT to FBI, Gensec, Zeal, they all look so different and so cool. Additionally, maps that take place in different locations actually have slightly different enemy designs. An example of this are the heists that take place in New York, like the Payday 1 heist. The enemies are stylized to look like Payday 1 enemies, and even the enemies that weren't in Payday 1, like the Medic, still have Payday 1-like designs, which is really cool. Even though the enemies just like look a lot cooler, the real reason why enemies are more fun in Resmod is because of how they fight, and that is because of the many, many new types of enemy types added, as well as restored in Restoration Mod. Wow, unbelievable. First of all, you fight more than just SWAT guy and SWAT guy with more health. Early into heist, you'll be fighting first responders who are less armored and less threatening than traditional SWAT units, but as the heist goes on, and depending on difficulty, more enemy types get introduced, and that goes for the normal enemies and not just the specials. On Overkill, you'll be fighting a combination of both City SWAT and FBI SWAT, 
And on Mayhem, you'll be fighting both FBI SWAT and Gensec. These stronger, higher tiered enemies show up more and more in the heist progresses, and it, and it really feels like they're amping up their firepower. Each tier of basic enemy is stronger than the last in both survivability and firepower, making the progression of enemies feel a lot more natural, and it just feels a lot better. In between assaults, you will see the return of the hostage rescue units, who also have different models depending on difficulty. Why were these guys removed overkill? Like, actually why? On higher difficulties, you will encounter the assault support unit, who is basically a super hostage rescue unit that buffs the damage of all nearby enemies, and you can tell that the enemies have this damage buff by this little yellow laser that appears on their guns. Other uncommon enemies like the ASU include the Titan SWAT, who can come in either auto shotgun or LMG variants. The auto shotgun has a mild stunning effect, and the LMG users have a mild knockback effect. Titan SWAT cannot be dominated, and even though they have more health than Heavy SWAT, they have a higher headshot multiplier, making them in practice less tanky than Heavy SWAT. The last uncommon enemy is the veteran who dual wields pistols and likes to flip around and dodge a lot of your shots. They are weak to melee, so if you're struggling to hit them, then you can take them down with a good smack. Moving over to the specials, they all function basically as you would expect from vanilla, working basically the same, but a bit smarter. Enemies will actually hide behind shields more, and tasers no longer reload your gun and the tasing effect is more violent. Medics can't heal if they're staggered or doing some other animation, like in vanilla, if they're doing anything, like if they're rolling, they'll just instantly snap out of the roll animation to heal. That doesn't happen in Resmod. If they're doing anything, they can't heal. Cloakers have been changed to be a bit more stealthy. They no longer make their ambient noise, and they don't make the cloaker noise when they charge you. But to make up for this, their goggles are always on, making them easy to spot. Their charge will still incapacitate you, but now their very fast leaps that are different than the charge will cuff you instead. To make up for this, cloakers can actually get staggered out of their charging attacks from damage, and this is another example of something from Resmod that was added later into Payday 3. Cloakers are a lot scarier as they are more unpredictable, so the cloaker counterattack skill is actually a good investment as it's only 3 skill points. But, we are still not done with specials. There is a new special enemy type who also happens to be added into Payday 3, that being the Grenadier. They fire tear gas grenades, forcing heisters to reposition. On higher difficulties, their tear gas is replaced with nerve gas that will also drain your stamina while you're inside its radius. And an important thing to note is you cannot dodge tear gas, because you can't dodge air. This makes their tear gas actually very strong against dodge builds. And all specials other than the Grenadier also have a new variant, which are dubbed Titan variants, like the Titan safes and Titan cameras. First are the Titan shields, which are basically just the Marshall shields from Vanilla. They have a larger shield and it has the flashbang effect, and again, their shields can be broken with enough damage. Titan shields, however, are more durable than normal shields, and they cannot be pierced by normal armor-piercing weapons like snipers. They can only be pierced by the Thanatos, and they are also blast-resistant, as well as just being bigger shields. They're like the Phalanx shields from Winters. They do have a built-in weakness in their lights they use to flashbang you. When they start charging up a flash, if you shoot the light, it'll stagger the shield and anything nearby. Next is the Titan Taser, who comes equipped with special slowing rounds that will apply a slowing effect if they hit you. Titan Medics, also known as the LPF, can overheal all nearby allies, but to make up for this, they are weak to melee. Titan Cloakers have active camo that makes them very, very hard to see, but to make up for this, they make the old ambient noise and charge sound that vanilla cloakers make. Titan Snipers are just the Martial Marksmen way before the Martial Marksmen existed. Titan Dozers are basically Sniper Dozers. They wield a sniper rifle, but to make up for their extreme firepower, their helmets are a bit worse at preventing headshot damage, as always some amount of your damage will go through even before you break it. And now is a good time to actually mention the rework to Snipers. Basically, they're no longer bullshit. They have a little nice little sniper glint to help you find them easier, but the main thing is they actually take time to focus their shot on you instead of just instantly killing you. This is also something that was added to Payday 3. You know when a sniper is focusing on you when your audio starts to muffle. And to make up for the fact that snipers are a lot more telegraphed and more avoidable, they do a lot more damage. Now when you apply the sniper rubric to the Titan Dozer, this Dozer can basically set up a sniper sightline anywhere, so they are a pretty big threat. 
However, the real star of the show when it comes to enemy variety in ResMod are the captains. Yes, captains, as in plural. Not only has Mr. Neville Winters been reworked to be a lot more interesting and threatening, there are three other captains that can show up. Winters now is basically a combination of a super medic and a super shield. He acts as both a titan medic and shield, with his own squad of super titan shields that are stronger than normal titan shields. Instead of sitting in the back with his squad, he will now rush you down with his squad, constantly overhealing all nearby cops. However, just like the normal titan medic, he takes extra damage from melee, making him actually quite easy to take down if you're able to get behind his shield and melee him a few times without being killed yourself. If Winters is a super shield and super medic, then Captain Spring is a super dozer. Minigun dozers might have been removed from ResMod, but that is because Captain Spring ate them all and absorbed all their power into one being. He may be super slow, but he spawns with a squad of special semi-auto shotgun dozers that throw grenades. Yes, they throw damaging grenades. And Spring himself also likes to throw around these grenades a lot. Spring's minigun has heavy knockback, and if he sprays you down while you're in the open, you're likely to go down. He does have similar weakness to Titan Dozers being his helmet, always leaving him vulnerable to some headshot damage, but even then, he is still a threat. The best way to take him out is to first take out his squad of special Dozers, then wait for him to reload his big minigun and rush him and burst as much damage into his face as possible before he finishes reloading. Next in line of super specials is Captain Autumn, who is a better Batman boss fight than the Batman fight in Kill the Justice League. He is a super Titan Cloaker, who spawns with his own squad of Titan Cloakers. He has permanent active camo and he will spam nerf gas grenades. He doesn't charge you like normal cloakers, but that's because he doesn't need to. His normal melee attack will cuff you, and then he'll just spawn tear gas on top of you to make you hard to rescue. Additionally, he will also turn off deployables while he's active, similarly to how cloakers in Payday 3 will destroy your deployables if you let them. Unlike other captains, his arrival is not announced, and the assault banner only changes after you damage him, but by that point, he's already dealt damage to you and your team. He is my favorite captain, he is actually hard to find and is a difficult fight, and having him laugh maniacally while taking down your squad one by one is really, really fun. I have had games where Autumn has soloed the entire squad, and I wouldn't have it any other way. The last captain is Captain Summers, who is more like a squad of captains. They are a squad of ex-heisters who faked their deaths and started working for Gensec to take down other criminals like you. They consist of Doc, who is a super medic who will heal all of his squad mates and has to be taken out first. Next is Major Molly, who sports a big 500 magnum and acts as kind of like a mid-range sniper. Then there is Electra, who is a super titan taser who, in the ResMod lore, created the tech used by titan tasers. Now finally, there's Captain Summers himself. He takes less damage if the rest of his squad is alive, so you should prioritize taking out the rest of his squad first. He will rush you down with his flamethrower and throw molotovs everywhere. The captains, as well as all enemies, just being as varied and interesting to fight as they are makes the game way more fun, as you're actually fighting a diverse police force with a variety of specialists and tactics, and instead of them just being brain-dead AI gunmen who all look the exact same. This is something that Payday 3 also struggles with, where all enemies are basically the same and the specials are not threatening at all. ResMod is harder than Payday 2 in a way that is more fun and engaging. For example, DSOD is not as stupid as it is in vanilla, where enemies actually still have damage fall off and don't two-tap you. However, even though you don't die instantly, ResMod is still hard, as a single enemy in ResMod is simultaneously weaker and stronger than a single enemy in vanilla Payday 2, and it's it's kind of hard to describe why. Part of the easierness comes from the fact that enemies are less bullet spongy, but also their AI is a lot smarter. Another thing that makes ResMod feel different than vanilla is the way that it tweaks the grace period. Basically, in Payday 2, whenever you take damage, there's a short window of time that lasts a fraction of a second where you cannot take damage again unless that other instance of damage is higher than the first instance of damage. ResMod likes to play with the grace period a lot and play with its mechanics a lot. One reason why a single enemy can pose a bigger threat in ResMod is the fact that although enemy damage per shot is less, your grace period is less, meaning if you stay in the line of fire for longer, you will take more damage than just being hit by one shot that does a decent chunk. It's really hard to explain this difference, and it's mostly feel. There is so much I haven't covered, a lot of which is just nice quality of life things that are restored. Like, why were hostage rescue teams removed? Why were these cool images from the skill tree removed? Why were pro jobs removed? Oh yeah, pro jobs! Unlike vanilla with the one down modifier that does actually nothing, ResMod restores pro jobs, and lets you turn it on as an extra hard mode for any heist. 
Pro Drops cannot be restarted, disabled basic dead drops, have friendly fire enabled, and have a special point of no return climax near the end of every heist. Final Charge from Payday 3 wishes it was as cool as this. Near the end of every heist in Pro Mode, there is a point of no return timer, as well as special Bravo units that come in. For the normal police, this is the United States military. Yes, you fight the actual US military in Pro Mode. They are stronger than the police, they have more health, their guns are better, and the normal units can throw grenades. Pro Mode is a perfect example of what makes ResMod so good. It is a feature that was removed from Payday 2 for no reason, and then was brought back, restored if you will, and expanded upon to be way cooler. The Bravo units for other factions are also really cool, like the Murky Water Call and a super PMC called Omnia, and seeing all the different versions of all the enemies for the different factions is just so cool. For example, the Titan Sniper for the Reapers on Boiling Point functions more like a normal sniper that have the big rifle that needs to focus instead of the normal police Titan Snipers that have their DMR. Also, the Reapers don't have a Titan Medic, instead they have the Flamer from Hardcore Henry with the gay jacket. That's gotta be the gayest jacket I've ever seen. Cool easter eggs like this are why I love ResMod. Like, sometimes instead of saying Descendants, it will say the Steel Path. The zombie police in the Halloween Heist actually have a secret fifth captain that is a super headless titan dozer. Titan enemies have yellow blood, which is a reference to madness combat. Bots will use their character signature weapon instead of just a car four. And even Big Dave is in the game. I don't know where, I don't know how to find him, but apparently Big Dave is in the game. Hopefully now you understand why I like this mod so, so much, and I hope you will try it. I think it's just objectively better than Vanilla Payday 2, and even Overkill agrees to some extent, because they've been taking stuff from this mod and adding it to Payday 2 and 3 for years. If you want an actually good co-op game, where you have to play smart and not just some unbalanced bullshit mess, then go play Resumon, because why would you play a horribly balanced game with insane amounts of power creep when you could just play a good game instead?